Now, a Malaysian human rights activist has been charged with breaking the country's censorship rules after she organised a public showing of a Channel 4 News documentary about the atrocities committed by the Sri Lankan government against Tamil civilians in 2009. Lena Hendry, who is 28, was arrested after 40 police and censorship officers raided the screening of No Fire Zone, the killing fields of Sri Lanka. She could face three years in prison or a £6,000 fine. The issue on Sri Lanka is not very well known in Malaysia and those who have interest in the issue is the only one who knows what happened. So this film is basically creating awareness and it's not a film that is prejudiced towards the government because it also showed the wrongdoings of the LTTE. It was a very balanced film between both the government and LTTE and of the suffering of the people that happened. All of a sudden, bullets were coming, like, firing right into the people. We all left knowing that they're going to die. There's nothing we can do. Lena Henry has been charged under Section 6, uh, the Film Censorship Act, which says that if you are distributing, showing a film, publishing a film without a permit of the Board of Censors, then you are committing an offence. So in this case, uh, she didn't have a permit to show the film. So we have said that this act, uh, the Film Censorship Act, which imposes a licensing scheme, uh, what we call a prior restraint, uh, is unconstitutional because it's unreasonable to expect that before all films are shown uh, in Malaysia, you must get approval of the Board of Censors. So we have challenged it as being unconstitutional uh, as being too wide and too arbitrary that every film, even a cartoon, even your wedding photos, um, your um, picnic, ha if you want to show it in public, you need to get a Board of Censors uh, approval. We say that's uh, unreasonable and in this case, we think it's been used uh, politically to silence uh, information from being disseminated uh, about the issue. On 3rd of July, on the day of the screening, uh, in the afternoon, the Sri Lankan ambassador and a few staff from the embassy turned up in Chinese Assembly Hall. Chinese Assembly Hall is where we had the screening at night. They met up with another member of the Chinese Assembly Hall from the civil rights uh, group and they spoke to him and they told him that um, you can't screen the film in this venue because uh, it uh, says wrong things about Sri Lanka. What you're talking about is censorship in its most crude form. Uh, the requirement that films be submitted to a government board uh, to be screened against a, a number of criteria that only a government determines uh, clearly violates the principle of freedom of expression. Uh, there are limitations on freedom of expression in international human rights law, but uh, the restrictions uh, that are drawn into the law by the Malaysian government are so broad that they can use almost any excuse they want to, to ban something. When it comes to art or when it comes to creative stuff, it's hard to, 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 to have a chop that says this is approved. You know what I mean? It's hard because the artists themselves will automatically have to think in the box already before they start filling the box, you know? So then you will have a series of artworks that are just like coming out of a factory, lah, you know? It has a government seal that says it's good, it looks loose, looks loose, loose. Art should not be clean, you know? It should, it, should, it should represent the things that you don't see or you don't want to talk about or you don't hear much about. That, that is the purpose for me. My documentaries, uh, at least many people say that they manage to get another perspective. They're exposed to another perspective after watching that documentary. But the problem is, if let's say the authorities don't think the same, they think, oh, this is dangerous, or people are not ready for it, this is sensitive for certain groups of people, and they ban it, so the public does not have the opportunity to view it themselves in the first place. So that is the problem. Naturally, some audience, they agree with it and some don't or some may have some criticism, which is totally fine. But that kind of engagement, that kind of exchange of opinion and the ability to accept other people's opinion, actually that is what we need to uphold. 
My case is a very unique case. Uh, why do I say that is because I am the first human rights activist charged in Malaysia for screening a film. And so far the act has been used on uh, people who sell illegal DVDs or involved in the piracy industry um, or send pirated DVDs. So by charging me, it looks like the government is sending a strong message to all the human rights defenders in Malaysia to not spread information, do not raise awareness. And if they succeed in charging me and penalizing me for, for screening the film, it sets a precedence towards all independent filmmakers, human rights activists, and also a lot of other people have approached us, saying from universities, from colleges, on doing screenings in their classes, how will they be affected? It kind of have successfully started a fear factor. And people are now thinking twice even to screen a film in a small class of 20 people for their own education.